Um, greetings from Chengdu Airport. And yeah, Chengdu is the happiest city in China. Oh, speaking of happiness, this is the happiest city in the world or in China? In China. Oh, Isaac received an invitation from the Chinese Institute of uh, High Energy Physics and it was funded by Shanghai Media. No, 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 no. What? I received an invitation from Shanghai Media Group to visit the Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory, which is funded by the Institute of High Energy Physics. Okay, so now can you tell us? Okay, so we first arrived in Beijing, and from Beijing, we moved here, we, uh, we fly over here, Chengdu Airport. From Chengdu, we went to Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory. What did you do there? Um, so in the beginning, we just witnessed a few experiments about the paths of cosmic rays, as well as the 3D model, and got to learn more about the Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory. But then we moved to Daocheng, which is around 4,500 meters above sea level, which means the oxygen levels and the temperature are both very low. And there, we visited the actual. What do you mean, we? Uh, we as in a team of th uh, three child prodigies, uh, of which I was one and two other are locally from China, as well as the filming team who went with us. Uh, how big was the filming team? Uh, the fil filming team was uh, from Shanghai Media Group and that was funded by Chinese government and Shanghai Media Group is the one of the biggest media here in China. How was the filming team? How big uh, was the filming team? Around 15 people. Around 15 people, and there was a sign. Um, yeah, there, of course. Well, we had two professors escorting us and showing us around. The and area two well. professors from where? Uh, from the Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory. I they see. Worked here. Okay, so what was the main objective? Why did they invite you? Um, so we were going to solve some sort of problem, but we didn't know what the problem was, and they didn't tell us. So we had to look for a specific design flaw in the observatory. And eventually, we found that in bad weather conditions, which could happen randomly and which couldn't be controlled, um, the, cos uh, the observatory wouldn't detect cosmic rays at all, basically. And heavy snow or heavy rain, or even on a very cloudy day, basically all of the electromagnetic particles from the decomposed rays would be lost in the air. And so none of the detectors on the ground would reach them. So we designed a sensor on a hot on a, a helium balloon to detect the cosmic rays and detect if the weather conditions were suitable enough for cosmic rays to appear. Everybody and if not, we were going to clean up the local area of air around it. And eventually, we created our prototype and had some design flaws, such as we couldn't make it automatic, um, we couldn't make it automatically go back down to the ground once it was up in the air which meant we would have to tie a rope to the nearest point. Uh, we would have to tie a rope to the point of liftoff. I saw it went to as long as, I don't know, 40 meters? Uh, 40 yeah. 40 meters to the... And in fact, it could go higher than that. Yeah. But the uh, that was one of the biggest flaws, that it couldn't release air automatically or release helium automatically and travel back down automatically. It would have to have a rope tied to it in order to stop it from flying away. Um, another design flaw was that uh, because of the way that we actually taped uh, the box carrying the sensor that was attached to the balloon, you couldn't actually take the, uh, take the lid of the box off and take the sensor out to recalibrate it or in case of emergency. So what person of the research was uh, math and what person of the research was physics and what person of the research was hands-on? I think most of it was in the hands-on in physics sector. I see. And there was not, 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 not much math. Okay, so speaking of three uh, uh, young research scientists, can you, can, you, can you tell us more about the, the remaining two and those two from China? Yeah, so the two others that I worked with were Cho and Dong. So uh, Dong is act, uh, actually... Cho was the team leader. Well, yeah. Uh, I picked him as the team leader because... Oh, uh, you had an option to pick him as a team leader? Well, we had a vote. Oh, but I see. I picked him as the team leader because... Uh, of course, Dong doesn't have as much physical ability, which meant he said it himself. Yeah, that's right. No, that's true. Yeah, I admire him. I saw what he did with the physical yeah. disabilities. Even I with saw his him. Physical disability. I saw him moving to all the way, uh, Duchang, um, uh, uh, high altitude, uh, 
uh, as high as 4,500 4, meters above the sea level, and also temperature, which was uh, very close to negative 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, dis uh, we decided, uh, and Dong decided himself actually, that he shouldn't be team leader because of his physical restrictions. Uh, and of course, also his inability to actually, uh, he has said himself that he's not that good at organizing people. And I decided to not choose myself as the team leader because of the language barrier, which was really making me struggle with communicating with others. So that's why we decided to make sure that we I see. So how did you overcome the language barriers? So I had an interpreter um, uh, named Wangja. He, uh, he really worked with me throughout the entire thing, even traveling up there to the plateau uh, to help interpret. And of course, he spoke, uh, he translated everyone. And in fact, he translated my words into Chinese yeah, as well. Yes, yeah. Which meant he had to speak for much longer, which also meant that on the plateau, he had much more difficulty. Absolutely, abs oxygen, oxygen. oxygen. I, I saw him with the, with the respirator all the yeah. time, and he was a, he, he is a perfect, uh, a translator, uh, almost perfect translator. Uh, speaking of three scientists, young scientists, or speaking of everyone you work with, who inspire you most? Uh, I, I think uh, Professor Chi from the Institute of High Energy Physics, because the way he approaches the cosmic uh, ray research uh, really enthusiastically mm. um, really inspires me to approach my own research, even though I'm not interested in cosmic rays, uh, very similar. I see. Finally, we uh, we would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the everybody. The Media Group, and of course, also to thank the uh, large high, the all of the professors and scientists who work at the large high altitude air shower observatory for letting me view the area and especially Professor Chu for helping me understand how we observe cosmic rays. And I would like to thank you. I would like to thank Charlie because she took her time to go all the way to the United States from China with her team to interview. Yeah. Uh, gotta keep in mind. Oh. oh, okay. Charlie yeah. is, yeah. Uh, Introduce uh, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Introduce oh, Charlie. Okay. We want to give her some credit. Yeah, yeah, Charlie is from Shanghai News Media. So she went to all the way to the United States with her team to interview Shubhana and uh, Dr. Uh, Hare Krishna Shukla. Shubhana is all professor at NYU and um, some some of his mentors. And then um, we came over here and she gave us warm welcome yeah, yeah, with yeah. her team. And her team consists of 15, you said, 15 people? Yes. All right. And finally, we want to thank the People Republic of China and everybody else who made this uh, wonderful journey possible.